Hi guys, welcome to this quick walkthrough of the new and improved texture brush pack. Whether you just bought the pack or you're curious about learning more before you buy, or you just stumbled across this video by accident, I am so glad that you're here. Um, if you would like to buy the pack and follow along, I have the link in the description below. If you haven't seen one of my videos before, I'm Mac. I'm an illustrator based in the rainy and beautiful Pacific Northwest, and I create brush packs that are full of real paint and paper and pencil textures. And then I refine them and test them out through months of personal work and client work. Every single brush has been updated, so they have new textures, shapes, refined settings. The drawing experience feels amazing. So today we'll go through swatches of all of the brushes and my favorite ways to use each brush brush and then we'll do a quick tutorial on how to draw this cute farmer's market haul and I thought it would be fun since this pack is kind of autumnal themed all the listing graphics are very autumnal um, to do kind of a cozy evening draw with me vibe so we've got the candle going I've got my tea and I'm so excited to draw with you guys and show you all the exciting changes to the pack so let's start with some swatches and dive into how I use each brush Okay, if I had one holy grail brush, the chunky chalk marker would be it. This brush has been my go-to for every single project that I've done since I updated it. It's super nimble, dynamic, and it feels really natural to draw with. The old version of this brush had a little bit of a halo around the brush stroke, which I really liked at the time, but I realized after using it for a while that it didn't look as clean or refined as I wanted it to. This one is super clean, but still has lots of texture within the brush stroke. It's pressure and tilt sensitive. If you tilt it, you could reveal this really charcoal-y, chalky texture, which I absolutely love. And it's my go-to for everything. Feathery Shadow is so beautiful. It's lighter and buildable, and it has a little bit of a watercolor paper texture. The edges are slightly feathered and you can bring out more opacity and texture with more pressure. And it's perfect for shading, adding washes of color, adding details. This brush has a beautiful, smooth, slightly speckled texture and lots of dimension. It's pretty chunky, so it fills space quickly, but it's also tapered, so it gives you a little bit more control and precision. The soft roller brush hasn't changed a whole lot from the original. The shape and grain are still the same, but I refined and updated the settings so it feels smoother and performs better. I love the chunky solid brush stroke for blocking out shapes. I love using it for block lettering and adding shadows, and it's definitely one of my all-time favorites. Oh, I love cotton fluff so much. It is a round brush with a really beautiful kind of stucco-y texture and really fuzzed out edges. I love using this brush to add dimension and shadows. I also love using it as an eraser and creating a softer, more subtle edge to different layers. There's also some speckly texture to it and a little bit of canvas texture. It's pressure sensitive as well, so you can build up the opacity or you can keep it really light and subtle. The honey and lemon paint pen was completely redone for this update and I absolutely love this new version. It has a slightly transparent, kind of wet, glazy, realistic paint texture that you can layer really beautifully. It also has a bit of a watercolor paper texture to it, so you can see a little bit of grain within the brush stroke. And I included two versions in this pack. There's an angled brush, which is really beautiful for lettering. It has a little bit of a crisper, more opaque edge to it. And there's also a round brush version, which creates really beautiful, swirling, even brush strokes. And I just had to include both because um, I love them both so much. Salt and Pep is another one that was completely redone. I wanted a more natural, less digital look to the speckles. So I created the texture by flicking a wet brush onto paper. The result was this light peppery spray of paint that I'm so happy with. I love that you can see the variations in the paint speckles and the opacity is pressure sensitive so you can tap it in lightly or you can get the full effect with more pressure. For speckled glaze, I used the same speckly paint spray texture as salt and pep, but I layered it to create a heavier stroke so the final effect has these fluffy feathered edges and 
The size and opacity are pressure sensitive, so it has a lot of range. It's also set to a multiply blending mode, so it intensifies the color as you layer brush strokes to create this really beautiful depth and dimension. Milky Watercolor was another one that I started from scratch on. The original was really beautiful, but it was kind of difficult to control and you had to tap it in to get the best effect. The updated version makes it so easy and smooth to create cloudy, milky watercolor washes. It's super buildable and easy to get these light watered down washes or more vibrant opaque layers. The shape also has these little speckly spray details along the edges which adds some fun variation and kind of ground the smoothness and cloudiness of the brush strokes. Cold Pressed Fill also got a complete makeover. When I came back to this one, I just didn't feel super excited about the plain pencil scribble texture that I originally had. And I wanted a more like messy dynamic effect, something that felt really earthy and a little bit gritty. And I'm so excited about the way it turned out. It's still full of those scribbly pencil marks, but it creates kind of a rough layered effect and has also the speckly CD texture overlaid. And finally, we have CD Vintage Print. And this is a brand new addition to the pack and it's got this varied spotted uh, line pattern with subtle little ink bleeds that give it this kind of old faded vintage print look. And I love layering this brush over objects with a clipping mask, and it's also great for textiles. Okay, so now that we're familiar with all of the brushes, let's dive right into the fun part, which is creating an illustration with them. So I'll be drawing this cute farmer's market haul. Feel free to follow along with me. I've included a link in the description that will let you download the sketch and color palette that I'll be using. We'll walk through kind of a sample workflow with the brushes to give you an idea of how I use them in my illustration work. I always like to start out by blocking out the bigger shapes first. And for that, I usually use soft roller brush, smoothie shader, or chunky chalk marker. And I'll show you an example of how I use each one. Then I like to add in some shading to create some texture and dimension. And I'll usually do this with the same color that I used for the base layer. 
on a clipping mask layer and I'll use the multiply blending mode. Then I'll adjust the opacity until it feels right. And a lot of times I'll go in and use the cotton fluff brush as an eraser to kind of blend and feather out the edges. So once it's all shaded and blocked out, I'll go in and add the details. So I'll add some line work or I'll layer up brush strokes to create some variation in color. And I usually do this with chunky chalk marker, honey and lemon paint pen, or smoothie shader. And then I'll usually add in some more shadows and highlights. So for this, I like to use fluffier, softer brushes that will blend really nicely together and give a more subtle effect. So cotton fluff, milky watercolor, speckled glaze, and feathery shadow are all perfect for this step.
All right, and there you have it. A finished illustration with countless possibilities, depending on how you choose to use and layer the brushes. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope this walkthrough was helpful for you, whether you followed along and got more familiar with the brushes, or if you were just curious and wanted to learn more. If you create work and share it on social media with the brushes, I would love to see it and cheer you on. You can tag me at the Gladdest Thing Shop and use the hashtag Gladdest Brushes, and I'll be able to find it there. And again, if you'd like to grab the texture brush pack, or any of my other brush packs, the link is in the description. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you next time.